I am so sorry. I did not say a singular word to you guys yesterday. And uh, I have a lot to say is the thing. So yesterday I finished two books. Oh, wait, hold on. Welcome to Summerween. Welcome to episode two of Summerween. We're only reading horror and nothing but things that Goodreads has labeled as horror. What was I talking about? I finished two books yesterday, right? And uh, the first one I finished was A House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. And uh, I don't want to sound like I'm just always hating on T. Kingfisher, but there is this tongue-in-cheek humor that comes from the FMCs that for me personally takes me out of the emotions I think I want to get out of a story and let me explain let me explain so I'm reading this book this is a haunting book right a girl she comes home to stay with her mother who is a little older is a little sick and there are odd things happening in the house this is just a good old-fashioned haunting story and uh, from a haunting i want to feel scared at the little odd things happening in the home i want to feel a building of tension until whatever the haunting is is explained i want to feel the interest in wanting to know the story behind what is haunting that is that, those are the feelings. Now, due to the tongue-in-cheek humor of this FMC, I just don't... I'll be like, oh, am I a little scared? And then she'll make a joke, and then I'm taken out of that completely. Which makes it difficult for me to enjoy what could be an eerie, spooky thing because of that tongue-in-cheek humor. And it really makes it difficult for me to reconcile my reading experience in a sense. For example, so there's a moment where she's sleeping and she feels something stroking her neck, right? And she's scared, of course. And there's like a whispering. And then she starts going on this ramble about how the only way to protect yourself and everybody knows is you pull that blanket over your head and you pretend like you're not asleep, just like in the movies. Something could be coming after you. As long as you pretend to be asleep and you close your eyes, you feel safe. Like she's going on this tangent that's like kind of humorous and at the same time, I'm completely forgotten that we are supposed to be feeling afraid because there's, there's something in the house. It really made it difficult for me to feel fear and I think that it's just me coming into a book with an expectation that I shouldn't just have. Um, if Kingfisher wanted me to feel afraid, that humor wouldn't be there. That humor is there intentionally and I think it makes these books written by T. Kingfisher more easily digestible humor, if that makes sense. I feel like that's what's going on. The fact that you can sit here and there can be a joke and you laugh a little bit and then maybe there's something in the basement. I think that's kind of what makes this so easy to handle and deal with, if that makes sense. Now that we've covered that, that was the first book I finished yesterday, we need to talk about the second book I read. Because I just had a five star horror experience that's comfort me with apples by Catherine m valente this book is a hundred and three pages of absolute perfection you open up and i'm not going to tell you too much about it because it's so small that i don't want to spoil a drop of it but i can tell you like what the inner flat basically tells you and that is you open up with Sophia, who is so happy and so grateful and feels so, so set in her perfect little life with her perfect little husband and her perfect little home. And her mantra in this life is, I was made for him. That's how she feels about this relationship that she has, how she feels in relation to her husband, just, I was made for him. And she's happy and everything is perfect. And she's overly satisfied with everything to do with her perfect little life. And 
one day she finds something amiss in her home. And that leads her down this spiral of conflicting emotions of, I love my husband, I love my house, but what is he doing when he leaves on these long trips? Where is he at all the time? Why don't I know what he does for work? And that almost consumes her into wanting to get answers into just what isn't quite right about her perfect little life, her perfect little home, the husband she was made for in their perfect little neighborhood that has that is gated from the outside. Um, here's why it's a five star. When I reached the reveals at the end and the pieces were finally put together, I went back because I wanted to see all the other moments that were hinting at the reveals. It is perfect. Getting this twist at the end, and this is a story that plays on a very well-known tale that I know you know. You don't have to do any research to know the tale that it's based off of. And it adds this dark twist to a story that we all know. And it is a five out of five. Now, when I say this is horror, it definitely is a horror book. I wasn't afraid. I would say if you can handle watching like an episode of Cold Case, you could handle this book. My thriller girlies, I really think you would love everything to do with this book. My weird lit girlies, just do it. It's only 103 pages. You're gonna feel confused in the beginning, but it's so quick and so small. There's not too many words on each page. It's the perfect novella and the way that things were withheld from me but once I knew the answers, I could see that I was being hinted at everything from the beginning. It's literally so perfect. And it has me on such a high. And um, I'm, in a, I'm in the mood to crush through some books today. We'll see how much I get through. Might not be much because I really need to clean the house and I need to refresh. I've been doing a lot of socializing this past week because with the fact that I'm leaving, all of my friends are like, we gotta do this thing, we gotta, we gotta do this. Y'all, no lie, I've gained six pounds in the past three weeks because we're out eating, we're out doing stuff, and I've kind of lost my routine. I haven't been to the gym, I'm not walking him as much, and I just need a day to just settle, make sure I get to bed on time tonight, maybe go for a nice walk at the park. I think that could be good, and read some books. pages into Nestlings by Nat Cassidy. And I picked this one up after the other ones that I've been reading this week because a lot of my other books, the very first week of Summerween, I did like eerie fantasy and then I did a that fun little novella and I think I really wanted to do something monster horror. So that's why I picked up Nestlings. And you open up with a husband and a wife who aren't on the best of terms and they win a housing lottery to stay in the most prestigious and beautiful home in all of New York City, center of Manhattan, closed gated facility, high ceilings, beautiful park on the inside of their property. It's just the 
place to be to the point where tourists literally stop on the sidewalk in order to take photos in front of the wrought iron gate of this building well the husband and wife like i said they're not on the best of terms but it's more like they just had a baby about a year ago and the wife in child labor as the result of child labor she is now paralyzed from the waist down and due to that the postpartum her relationship with her baby isn't the best the way that she conceptualizes being a mother is one that's very wrought with distaste and resent and she does resent this child for the life that it ended what she was able to do no longer exists and she definitely relates it to the birth of this child and the birth of their baby girl um so that's what i mean by their relationship isn't on the best of terms and they win this housing lottery and it's first of all it's kind of difficult for the wife to maneuver she's they're on the very top floor and she has a wheelchair she isn't mobile and there's only one elevator kind of a fire hazard and it's kind of the setup of where we're at it does give this gothic horror which i love the gothic kind of setting that i'm getting the dark and eerie old home with gargoyles posted up on the parapets of the building it's giving me that scene the author isn't describing it too heavily this author is definitely lacking in description of the book which i can say when i get these gothic books i love a very heavy description but what the author is doing is giving me a lot about the character so this is obviously more of a character ran horror and the characters are a huge part so i'm getting a lot from them i just really wish i was getting more of this gothic castle-y feel i just have like I've been told about the wrought iron gates and I've been told about the high ceilings and I've been told about the park that's in the center of the building, but I want to feel that gothic setting and I don't know if I'll get it later. I know there's, there's these long hallways, there's a very old style to this building, but I'm not getting the brick and mortar building of this book, which I kind of wish I got more of. Again, that's just a me thing. That's not necessarily a complaint. It's just that this would be taken even more if I got this setting even more fleshed out just because it's a setting that I like. Um, fear wise, I am at a scene where a character is exploring a hallway with no lights, right? Like this character is going through the building and gets lost because they don't really want to take the elevator. They want to explore this really prestigious, beautiful building, right? And goes down a hallway and is like, oh, the connection to a stairwell should be down this hallway. No idea why all the lights are out. Not a big deal. I'll use my phone camera. And as this character walks down the hallway, that's completely dark. A door slowly creaks open and something comes running out. I think that it's, cause like I said, third of the way through, I haven't quite seen the scary and I haven't quite had a horrible thing happen, but I do think this slow build is being done really well because like I said, it's about the characters and the relationship of this husband and wife, you can see it like, crumbling you can see the wires fraying you can see them slowly butting heads you can see how this relationship is on the rocks and how it's building up and i do think that is a center of this story and then the monster horror occurs around this relationship i'm having a good time so far i desperately need to shower i am so sweaty from hanging out outside i can't be outside with the snakes unless it's between like 85 and 89 degrees and i just hang out i let them yogurt doesn't do much yogurt stays curled up on whatever blanket i'm on and he sleeps but ducky will literally explore all around which i love for her so she can stretch out get some exercise she's not very active in her enclosure so i'm sweaty and gross from sitting out in the heat that long and uh, i'm excited to just crush through this i think i can finish this before i go to bed Again, after I shower, I'm disgusting. And then I also need to clean up a little bit. But I think we can finish this before I close out the vlog.
That's the goal. far past my bedtime I am so tired um I finished it I finished this book now okay so this was a monster story this was definitely a scary thing with its face pressed up against your window what is going on with my baby what is happening in this building type of story and that gothic feel definitely came later that I really wanted I just need to say that this had a level of like grossness to it. Oh my goodness, this had a level of grossness to it. This definitely had some gore. This had a play on vampires, I would say. And the ending was great. This was definitely, I would say, the most horror of the books that I've read so far like this was a good classic Halloween type of read I would say this feels Halloweeny this feels spooky season and this was like here's the thing whenever I like explore a new genre and I start like experiencing new things I immediately I'm like star 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 stars so I do think this is like a four star read for me because the emotions that I was feeling, I had to get past these pages. I had to finish this book. I had to get to the next scene. I had to figure out what was happening. So I think the excitement of that and turning through pages and needing to get to the end and needing to find out what happened, it started off with this slow kind of build and building a like eerie sort of scary scene like the setting was definitely just like an eerie uncomfortable what is happening type of moment but once stuff started happening goodness gracious stuff was happening and it was like i said just like one of those scary halloween movies it gave me that kind of feeling it wasn't just like a weird book the concept of monsters i think is so spooky season and if you're up for it let me think if you are okay with classic horror movies i would say you could do this one if you can watch mm, jeepers creepers if you can handle watching a jeepers creepers you should read this book i'm not saying it's exactly that but i would say like the level of like oh my goodness that is a scary thing chasing after me that's the same level of like kind of scariness that i felt here kind of like grossness uncomfortable uncomfortable kind of like feelings um i would say do it i would say do it as somebody who is scared of everything and cannot watch horror movies often this one was more like, oh my goodness, that is gross, and oh my goodness, what is happening? It wasn't necessarily, again, I think the hauntings are the ones that get me. So that's just my personal horror. So if you think you can handle a monster horror, this one was definitely a page turner for me. I need to go to bed. Oh my goodness, I need to go to bed. Thank you for joining for another episode from summer ween i will see you next time and i hope that you're having a great week i hope that you're reading great books if you enjoy hanging out like and subscribe i'll see you for the next episode of summer ween i'm having fun with this i'm having fun but at the same time i still have that like pending fear that the next book is gonna like ruin my sleep schedule and keep me up every night i'll see you soon